Um, uh, when Ronald Reagan won the presidency in 1980, his campaign manager for that presidential campaign was a man named Bill Casey, William Casey. Um, and after they won that election and Reagan became president of the United States, he appointed his campaign manager, Bill Casey, to be director of the CIA. So the big jump, right? Campaign manager to CIA director. Um, but that's what Reagan did, and Bill Casey served as CIA director until 1987, when he uh, died of complications from a brain tumor. And when Bill Casey died, leaving that opening at the head of the CIA, Reagan made an interesting decision. He didn't bring in from the outside a new head of the CIA. He decided instead to make an internal shift within his administration to fill that crucial job at the CIA. He decided he wouldn't bring up, you know, bring up somebody from inside the CIA. He wouldn't bring in somebody totally new. Instead, he moved over from the FBI, the director of the FBI, to start being the head of the CIA to replace William Casey after Casey died in 1987. And that was an interesting decision that Reagan made right at the end of his term in office in 1987. That, of course, even though it filled the job at the CIA, it left an opening at the top of the FBI, right? Move the FBI director over to the CIA, interesting for the CIA, but now a big hole to fill at the FBI. And there being an opening at the top of the FBI that was a very, very rare thing at the time. I mean, there haven't been that many people who have run the FBI. For almost the first half century of its existence, the FBI had exactly one director, its founding director, J. Edgar Hoover. Hoover died in office in 1972 after being FBI director for more than 40 years. Um, so when Hoover died, Nixon got to a point um, his replacement, who was then the on only the second person to ever hold the job, his name was Clarence Kelly. He was the second director of the FBI. He served in that job for about five years. Then the third director was William Webster. He was appointed by President Carter in 1978. That, William Webster, that's the guy who Reagan moved over from the FBI to run the CIA after his campaign manager there got a brain tumor and died. And that meant in 1987, at the end of Ronald Reagan's time in office, the FBI needed a new director for only the fourth time in its entire existence. It's fascinating, right? This is really late in our history for this to be such a rare job opening. I mean, this is an incredibly prestigious, incredibly powerful, incredibly important job. And by the end of the 80s, only three people had ever held it in the history of our country. So he's looking for the fourth FBI director ever. And for whatever reason, Ronald Reagan had a heck of a time finding somebody to take that job. He asked a federal judge in Oklahoma to become FBI director. That judge said, no, I don't want it. He asked a federal judge in San Francisco to be FBI director. That judge said, no, I don't want it. He asked a federal appeals court judge to be FBI director. That judge said, no, I don't want it. He asked the former governor of Pennsylvania, would you like to be FBI director? The former governor of Pennsylvania said, no, I don't want it. He then asked the frigging commandant of the Marine Corps, hey, would you like to be FBI director? He also said, no, no, I don't want it. Nobody wanted the job. And so finally, after months of looking at it becoming kind of an embarrassing thing for the Reagan administration, all these different increasingly high profile people saying no, 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 they didn't want the job. Finally, they found somebody, I think four or five months into the process, finally they found somebody who told them yes. It was a uh, Texas lawyer. Uh, a Texas judge, actually, was sort of a genteel country club Republican type. He famously said, even though he was from Texas, he did not even own a pair of cowboy boots. Um, but it's, it, it, he did have a, a tough reputation. He was famous in Texas for having handed down life sentences to the two men who had murdered his own predecessor in the judge seat that he held in West Texas. That judge had been murdered in office William Sessions then took that judgeship following the murdered judge. He oversaw the trial for the murder of his predecessor, and he saw both of the perpetrators put away for life. So, see, we had this interesting sort of tough guy reputation. And 
There are a lot of interesting and, and dramatic, laudable things about William Sessions and his career over the course of his life, up to and including him becoming the fourth ever director of the FBI. Incidentally, he's the father of Texas Congressman Pete Sessions. Um, but th despite everything else there is to know about William Sessions and his career, culminating with him being appointed to run the FBI by Ronald Reagan in 1987, despite everything else you might know about his career, one thing he will always be known for is that he was the first person in U.S. history to ever be fired as FBI director. Before this year, he was the only person in American history to have ever been fired as FBI director. And whether, you know, you were a fan of William Sessions over the course of his career or not, and he certainly had more uh, friends than he had enemies, um, you know, his firing as FBI director, it did cause a little bit of a stir at the time, but it hasn't gone down in history as a, as a great controversy. Reagan had appointed him in the first place. Again, under those difficult circumstances at the end of his presidency, and lots of other people not wanting the job. Um, William Sessions served as FBI director through the very end of Reagan's term. He served through the whole term of George H.W. Bush's time in office. By the time the 1992 election came around, though, and George H.W. Bush lost to Bill Clinton in that election, the Justice Department had started by then a big and ultimately sort of embarrassing ethics investigation into William Sessions as FBI director. And you know, I think it is fair to say that what ultimately brought him down, this report that the Justice Department did into him, it was not the world's biggest scandal. <laughs> it was not a hugely scandalous corruption probe or something. It wasn't like an espionage probe or something dramatic like that. It wasn't even a particularly big political fight over him. What brought him down was a parade of little embarrassing stuff. They accused him of using taxpayer funds to build a $10,000 fence at his home in Washington, D.C. They accused him and his wife of manipulating taxpayer-funded travel arrangements to go visit their friends and family. They accused him of using a taxpayer-funded car and driver for his, his own personal use and not for FBI business. It was that kind of little stuff, a whole list of that kind of stuff. And William Sessions, you know, he, he contested the charges, he vehemently denied any wrongdoing, but the Justice Department, in fact, did this exhaustive ethics investigation of his tenure at the FBI. They produced this report about what they concluded was him misusing power and misusing taxpayer funds on a relatively small scale. And that report was sitting on Bill Clinton's desk when he got sworn in as president in January 1993. And indeed, within the first few months of his presidency, Bill Clinton decided to fire him. And that's how William Sessions became the first, and until this year, the only person to ever be fired as FBI director. And again, it was not the biggest scandal in the world. And it was not particularly political, at least it wasn't partisan. William Sessions was a Republican. He'd been appointed by a Republican president. He had served under two Republican presidents. Despite that, he was actually much more popular with Democrats on Capitol Hill than he was with Republicans on Capitol Hill. So there was this real mixed picture in terms of partisanship and partisan interests surrounding him. There was also never really any question about whether Bill Clinton might be firing the FBI director to stop some FBI investigation or to twist the FBI around into taking a more favorable view of his administration. It, it was this small stuff. It was this picayune, petty corruption and ethics stuff. And before this year, that was the entire American history of presidents firing FBI directors. That's why this president firing James Comey as FBI director was such a big freaking deal. I mean, before now, the only other time this had happened was the guy who helped himself to a fence <laughs> that he should have paid for himself. I mean, what happened this year, what happened with James Comey is nothing like that. And today, that became more clear than ever. So far over this past month since they fired James Comey, this White House has rolled out one, two, three different stories to explain why they fired him. And today with the Attorney General under oath, that whole confused, can't get their story straight strategy just absolutely fell apart. I mean, if you're gonna fire the FBI director, 
especially right after that FBI director confirms in public that the president's campaign is the subject of an ongoing and uh, an open ongoing FBI counterintelligence investigation. When we now know that the FBI has an open criminal investigation and one of, into one of the president's top advisors, his former national security advisor, if you're going to fire the FBI director under those circumstances, you really need to have your story straight about why you did that, because that is not normal American behavior. That does not comport with U.S. history. That is not the way we do things. You better have a good reason to explain why you're doing that. The White House instead has tried a few different reasons for why they did that. In regard to the termination of the former FBI Director Comey, the president over the last several months lost confidence in Director Comey. The DOJ lost confidence in Director Comey. Bipartisan members of Congress made it clear that they had lost confidence in Director Comey. And most importantly, the rank and file of the FBI had lost confidence in their director. Now, what gives you such confidence that rank and file within the Bureau lost faith in the FBI director? There's a special agent who's inside who, who wrote us who said, the vast majority of the Bureau is in favor of Director Comey. This is a total shock. This is not supposed to happen. The real losers here are 20,000 frontline people in the organization because they lost the only guy working here in the past 15 years who actually cared about them. So what's your response to these rank-and-file FBI agents who, who disagree with your contention that they lost faith in, in Director Cole? Look, we've heard from uh, countless members of the FBI that say very different things. So the, the White House tried that one on for a while. The FBI rank-and-file. The FBI had turned against Director Comey. FBI agents hated him. Uh, the president himself tried that one on in an interview with Lester Holt. Look, he's a showboat, he's a grandstander. The FBI has been in turmoil. You know that, I know that, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. That, that was one of the explanations they have tried for this incredibly ahistorical thing they have done. One of their explanations they tried, one of their explanations for why FBI Director James Comey had to be fired was that the FBI, everybody knows, FBI is in turmoil, FBI agents, the rank and file hated him. He had to go. You know, that is an empirical claim. That is a claim that can be checked. When checked with the current head of the FBI, turns out that claim is not true. We've heard in the news that, that uh, claims that Director Comey had, um, had lost the confidence of rank and file FBI employees. Um, you've been there for 21 years. In your opinion, um, is it accurate that the rank and file no longer supported Director Comey? No. No, sir. That is not accurate. I can tell you, sir, that um, I worked very, very closely with Director Comey from the moment he started at the FBI. I was his executive assistant director of national security at that time. I then worked for him running the Washington field office. And, of course, I've served as deputy for the last year. Um, I can tell you that I hold Director Comey in the absolute highest regard. I have the highest respect for his considerable abilities and his integrity. And it has been the greatest privilege and honor of my professional life to work with him. Um, I can tell you also that Director Comey enjoyed broad support within the FBI and still does to this day. We are a large organization. We are 36,500 people across this country, across this globe. We have a diversity of opinions about many things, um, but I can confidently tell you that the majority, the vast majority of FBI employees enjoyed a deep and positive connection to Director Comey. So that was the word from the FBI after James Comey was fired by the president and the president and the White House tried to say the reason they had to fire him is because the FBI hated him so much, because the FBI was in turmoil under his leadership. The FBI itself, as, as spoken by its acting director, Andrew McCabe, under oath, says that is absolutely not true. So that was 
their first cover story. FBI hated James Comey. It was in turmoil. That's why he had to go. That explanation was basically blown out of the water as soon as they tried it. But they resuscitated it today. The attorney general today, under oath, briefly tried to bring it back to life. I presented to the president my concerns and those of Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein about the ongoing leadership issues at the FBI, as stated in my letter recommending the removal of Mr. Comey. Attorney General Jeff Sessions today uh, claiming once, this was one of his attempts at explaining it, claiming initially today that the FBI director, James Comey, had to be fired. Um, you know, this, this remarkable, unprecedented thing in American history, it had to happen because of what he called leadership issues at the FBI. Now, as we've just shown, that really did not fly when the Trump administration tried it before. Today, it was also quickly blown out of the sky. One of the comments you made in your, in your testimony was that you'd reached this conclusion about the performance of then-Director Comey's uh, ability to lead the FBI, that you agreed with um, uh, Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein's memo. The fact that you'd worked with Director Comey for some time, did you ever have a conversation as a superior of Director Comey with his failure to perform or some of these ac accusations that he wasn't running the FBI in a good way or that somehow the FBI was is in turmoil? Did you have any conversations with Director Comey about those subjects? I did not. So you were his, his superior, and there were some fairly harsh things said about Director Comey. Um, you never thought it was appropriate to raise those concerns before he was actually terminated by the president? Uh, I did not do so. So only once before in the history of this country have we ever fired an FBI director. He was fired because of improperly accepting offense. <laughs> This one, you say, we had to fire him because he was so terrible at running the FBI. Okay, you're his boss. Did you ever speak to him about that? About him being terrible at running the FBI and the FBI being in turmoil? FBI agents, the rank and file being against him? You were his boss. Did you ever raise it with him? No, never, not once. No, we never spoke of it. I never brought it up. So that is one of their attempted explanations for this remarkable thing they did. One of their attempted explanations for why the president fired the FBI director is that he was bad at running the FBI. Uh, they, they tried that and abandoned it really early on after they fired him. The attorney general under oath tried to bring it back today, but he had no explanation why his own behavior didn't comport with that version of events. One might reasonably surmise that that purported explanation for Comey being fired has now been exhausted. But don't worry, they have a couple others. Uh, they've also tried another story to purportedly explain why the president had to do this remarkable thing, why he had to fire the FBI director. One of the other explanations they've tried on was that James Comey had to be fired because he mishandled the resolution of the whole Clinton emails thing during last year's campaign. Since the firing of James Comey, the White House and Attorney General Jeff Sessions today have tried to claim that they found James Comey's statements about the Clinton email investigation to be so super egregiously inappropriate, so shockingly bad, that that's why they had to fire him. That purported explanation also does not make sense. It does not make sense in part given how people like the Attorney General talked about that behavior by James Comey when it happened. You know, FBI Director Comey did the right thing. When he found new evidence, he had no choice but to report to the American Congress where he had under oath testified the investigation was over. He had to correct that and say this investigation is ongoing now. So and I'm sure it's significant or he wouldn't have announced that. He did the right thing. He had no choice. He did the right thing. That was right before the election. Today, that same person, <laughs> Jeff Sessions, tried to claim that he feels exactly the opposite about the way James Comey handled that matter. This was based on Mr. Comey's handling 
of the investigation involving Hillary Clinton in which you said that he usurped the authority of prosecutors at the Department of Justice? Yes, that was part of it. Uh, and uh, the commenting on the investigation uh, in ways that go beyond uh, the proper policies. Yeah, his comments on the investigation. Mm -mm -mm. You know, it was either absolutely necessary and the right thing that James Comey say the things he said about the Clinton investigation, or it was absolutely inappropriate and the wrong thing and a cause for him to be fired. It can either be absolutely the right thing or cause for firing. It can be one or the other, depending on your take, but you can't have both takes. <laughs> you can't pick both of those answers. You can't pick it was the right thing and it was a firing offense. It was a pr an appropriate thing and it was a totally inappropriate thing. You can't hold both of those views if you are the same Jeff Sessions as you were in November. It is a huge and remarkable thing in American history that the President of the United States fired the director of the premier law enforcement agency in the federal government. That the President fired the director of the FBI after the FBI had opened up what we now know is an ongoing criminal investigation into one of the president's top advisors, his national security advisor, after the FBI director had confirmed publicly that the FBI is conducting an ongoing counterintelligence investigation into the president's campaign and the Russian attack on our country last year. It is absolutely unprecedented in American history that the president would fire the FBI director full stop, let alone that the president would fire the FBI director in those fraud circumstances. There really has only been one other FBI director fired ever before, and it was for nothing like this. They struck out in saying that James Comey was fired for the turmoil at the FBI. There does not appear to be turmoil at the FBI. They struck out saying James Comey was fired for talking about the Clinton emails investigation last year. The people who supposedly fired James Comey for that, including the president, including the attorney general, they're on record as expressing their delight with James Comey for him talking about the Clinton emails investigation last year. So it's neither of those things. The only other explanation they have put forward for this remarkable decision for the president to fire the FBI director is the one that the president himself gave on camera after those other explanations had already been put forward and tried and immediately fell apart. Regardless of recommendation, I was going to fire Comey, knowing there was no good time to do it. And in fact, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, I said, you know, this Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made-up story. This is the third explanation that the White House and the President have given as to why the FBI director was fired. The other explanations were trotted out again today by the Attorney General, but they remain implausible and disproven. They continue to not stand up under scrutiny. If this third one is it, if the President did fire the FBI director because of the Russia investigation that he was overseeing, honestly, I think most rational observers would believe there is likely no legal exit ramp for the president or for anybody who abetted him in doing that. And the attorney general, under oath, confronted with that possibility, just decided to start digging. Do you concur with the president uh, that he was going to fire Comey regardless of recommendation? because the problem was the Russian investigation. Senator Feinstein, I guess I'll just have to let his words speak for himself. Uh, I'm not sure what was in his mind explicitly uh, when we talked with him. Did you ever discuss Director Comey's uh, FBI handling of the Russia investigations with the president or anyone else? <coughs> Uh, Senator Feinstein, that would call for a communication between the Attorney General and that. the President, and I'm not able to comment on that. You are not able to answer the question here whether you ever discussed that with him? That's correct. And how do you view that since you discussed his termination, why wouldn't you discuss the reasons? Well, I, 
those were put in writing and sent to the president, uh, and he made those public, so uh, uh, he made that public. So not, you'd had no verbal uh, conversation with him well, about the firing uh, of Mr. Comey? I'm not able to discuss with you or confirm or deny uh, the nature of uh, private conversations that I may have had with the president on this subject or others. Did the question of the Russian investigation ever come up? I cannot answer that because it was a, a communication by the president, or if any such occurred, it would be a communication that he has not waived. It is a remarkable thing that the president fired the FBI director. Was he fired because of turmoil at the FBI? No. Was he fired because of statements he made about the conclusion of the Clinton email investigation? Plainly, no. Was he fired because of the Russia investigation? I'd prefer not to answer that, senators. That's apparently the strategy now. Legally, it would appear that that cannot stand. But that can be figured out, actually, and that's next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.